the argument that uh, you can learn about the behavior of animals in zoos is not one that is a um, very good one. It is similar to saying you are going to study the behavior of the general public in a prison and then say that, oh, this is how the general public actually acts. No, that's a ridiculous argument for holding the state point that there is some kind of education in a zoo. In fact, if you are going to listen to Jane Google or if you are going to listen to Dr. Fassi, how both actually did study animal behavior, you see that animals are actually totally different, different in their real environment and then they are due in prison. They are actually changing their behaviors. They include pacing and circling, tongue playing and bar biting, neck twisting, head bobbing, weaving and swaying, rocking, over grooming and self mutilation, vomiting and regurgitating, coprophilia and coprophagia, meaning the playing with and eating of excrement in species that do not naturally exhibit this behavior apathy or non-reaction to stimuli, abnormal mother-infant relationships which can result in the injury and death of babies, prolonged infantile behavior wherein animals do not mature properly, and abnormal aggressive behavior. And uh, many more dependence on the space around them. This is also not hard to understand if you are realizing that animals are aware, so, uh, are self-aware conscious creatures like the Cambridge Declaration of Consciousness explained of 2012. We are thinking we are so special, but in reality, we are just different. We are not special. We have qualities they ha don't have, but they have qualities that we don't have. And we can be very easy misguided because of our arrogance and self delusion characteristics. But if you look into the bigger picture, the hummingbirds have the highest body to brain ratio of all animals. And the tree string of that of um, all mammals. Whales, specifically the sperm whale, have the largest brain on the planet. It also has the largest amount of neurons of all and get part of all uh, animals. It has a um, four-lobed brain, which is far more dis distinct than our brain, which basically, some call it a four-lobed brain, but basically it isn't, two, isn't a three-lobed brain, because one of part is actually just an extension of another. They are not so distinct. And like I had said before, Brain to body size is not so much important in contrary with some of your biology classes in high school. Because otherwise this, this, the hummingbird will be the most intelligent species on the planet and the tree shrink will be the most intelligent mammal on the planet. And I do think you are not willing to agree that the tree shrink and the hummingbird are the most intelligent species on the planet. I think your ego don't can handle that. So bottom line, there are many animals who are smarter than us, but not in manipulation, where we are the absolute highest animal. There is not one animal who is more manipulative than our species. I think that's not something to be proud of, in fact. Technology. We are brilliant. Living in the harmony, we are on the same part of parasites. I can't say so. We live in not in harmony with the ecosystem and with the other animals. Commodifying them for food is not harmony when we speak about farm animals. And we are destroying the habitats of other living beings to make place to feed those animals, most people eat. That's not symbiotic. A symbiotic relationship 
is supposed to benefit any party. A parasitic relationship, a malignant relationship, is some uh, where only one party benefits. We must learn to live in harmony with the three laws of ecology. There is a limit of finite resources. There are, must be diversity between species on the planet. Uh, our species live, or must live, in some kind of symbiotic relationship with each other. You see it around nature everywhere. For example, with uh, algae eaters and hippos, and hippos and some kind of beards, and crocodiles, and elephants, and golden baboons. So, awaken, people. Think. And don't support the zoo.